What's up, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> and welcome back to HCS Pro Talk. It's storming like a motherfucker out there, but that's okay. This is HCS Pro Talk, your weekly Halo Esports podcast. This is episode 228 for the week of March 27th, 2022. It's called Breaking the Rules. Because, uh, face it, broke their own rules. Can't wait to talk about that. That's going to be fun. My name is Josh, a.k.a. J.K. Fire. This week, I'm joined by the man who ate not only Arby's, but also mac and cheese. Will, a.k.a. I, Mr. Mayhem. Will, how are you doing? Well, he's also in a podcast of all hoodie, which is pretty dope itself. So, Will, how are you doing on this Tuesday, Tuesday after, uh, evening? Not afternoon. Full. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? No way. You're full? Yeah, you know, I was on my way over, needed to... Needed to get dinner, so I picked up some Arby's. I got here, and you're like, you want some mac and cheese? I can't turn down mac and cheese. So, here we are. The man's a fan of the mac. Yeah. I'm stuffed. I'm ready to do the show. Well, yeah. do you want to know what's coming yeah. up on this sure. week's episode? I'll, I'll ask you how you were doing. Oh, I'm all right. Want to skip ahead, sure. I'm tired, uh, but I, I'm, you know, I'm hanging in there, man. You know, just living the dream, as us Minnesotans say. Great. Apparently, that's the thing like we always say is that we're living the dream. Yes, to hide our disdain for life. Right, but like, <laughs> but what is that dream? That dream must be pretty shitty. Like, if if that's what we're living. No, it's the sarcasm of you. Oh, oh sure. Living the dream when yeah. it's living my best life. Said no one, ever. <laughs> All right. On this week's episode of the show, we have players and teams are invited to the HCS Kansas City Major. One of the greatest game comebacks in Halo esports history, at least that I've seen. Rules written are not followed by those who wrote them. The return of map legends. It's going to be for recharge. Stay tuned for that. It's going to be a good time. Halo's future. The next CDL major is on the horizon. And of course, we round things out with some video games. So without further ado, Will, let's just jump right into some competitive news. Tournament announcement by SWAT Nation Dark. SWAT Nation Dark presents Spring Fling Swipers. No swiping. No swiping. Uh, Halo 5 co-ed tourney with a $250 prize pool. Registration closes on April 8th uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern. Tourney is on April 9th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Now we have an old school Halo tournament announcement. This is by Halo Lives On. It says, uh, calling all OG Halo players and Pucket fans. Grab your squad and sign up for the Spring Fling. Wow, another Spring Fling. A 4v4 Halo CE tournament on Saturday, April 9th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Two tournaments at April 9th at 2 p.m. Eastern. There's no entry fee in a, in a $1,500 prize pool for the top six teams. Pretty fucking awesome. Talk about awesome. We have the AT&T Annihilator Cup announcement. This is by AT&T. 20 streamers, five games, one of which is obviously infinite. Otherwise, we wouldn't be fucking talking about it on our show. And one winner. The AT&T Annihilator Cup is back and bigger than ever. Watch live every Friday in April at twitch.tv forward slash ATT. Not AT ampersand T, just ATT. ATT. Yeah. at to. Halo Data Hive gets an update. By Halo Data Hive. I've updated the tournament detail pages with a standings tab. Under this tab, you can see the current standings for each pool. Also, if you click a team, the role will expand to show the player's stats. Who doesn't fucking like stats? Wow. Will. Owen Wilson, you like stats? Yeah. Sick. Halo.api gets an update by Halo.api. A new exclamation point stats command has been added to the Twitch bot. This includes uh, stats PvP. Stats ranked and stats social. So if you want your stats, which we just talked about how awesome stats were, you can get your stats with your stats. Stats. And finally, an update coming to Europa Halo production tool. This is by Tepic. He states, continuing to work on Europa Halo's production tool with Twitch integration, producers will be able to timestamp the start of a match, then each game of it will be automatically marked as well. It'll make it easier to cut and edit VOD, plus the groundwork for uh, auto polls and predictions, which is pretty fucking sweet. That's it for the competitive news. Your upcoming tournaments of the week, presented by NoobCombat.com. Check out NoobCombat.com for all the Halo Wii sports needs. 
and some merch if you want to buy that. And uh, don't worry, we still have in the back of our noggins the fuck you, Maddie, and the fuck you, Josh shit. So <laughs> just, you know, I'm not saying that it's going to come out, but, like, stay tuned maybe. Who knows? It would be pretty funny, though, you know? Just think about that for a second. Like, legitimately. You see somebody walking around with a shirt that either says, like, just huge, fuck you, Maddie, or fuck you, Josh, right? Because not a lot of people are named Maddie. Yeah. I mean, I know he's not named Maddie, but, like... Maddie Rons. Right. So, just think if you had a shirt that said, fuck you, Josh, on it, and you're walking around town, <laughs> and somebody is named Josh, like, hey, fuck you, too. Like, what? Oh, 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 not you. But, uh, yeah, but also fuck you. So, I mean, that's, it is, it'd be funny. But uh, daily tournaments that are taking place, UMG daily tournaments and first blood daily tournaments, you can go check those out. Uh, Tuesday, March 29th, that's today, the Halo Rec League FFA series and something I forgot to put in here, the um, Money Tuesday, uh, I think it's the uh, show match today. Fuck. Either way, it's like, the, it, it's it's happening tonight. So, like, tune in, you know? It's fucking, it's, it's good shit. It, it's, it's good shit. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look it up. See, I, I, I was hoping it would be in my notifications, but it wasn't. I feel like an asshole. Um, uh, Money Tuesday, mid-season invitational, partnered with First Blood. Four-team single elimination tournament, $1,000 winner take all, and uh, it'll be Pyretic and Evolving uh, against, I think... Shit. I think Vemzy and Hillbilly. I think Remincy, Reminant, Reminacy is Vemzy, I think. Playing on a Smurf. Whatever. And then Booba Dooba and Falcated and Bound and Renegade. So there's going to be some fucking sweaty matches in there. Get excited. I'm excited. You should be excited. Excuse me, too. Wednesday, March 30th, the Knights Arena Weekly Halo Infinite 4v4. On Friday, April 1st, we have the LFTG Halo Infinite 2v2. On Saturday, April 2nd, we have the EGL ba Halo Banished Cup and the Advanced GG Ladies Halo Infinite Draft 4v4. On Saturday, April 2nd to Sunday, April 3rd, we have all four, the HCS Open Championships for Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, EU, and North America. And the top two teams from each region get travel coverage to the HCS Kansas City Major. So that's pretty fucking awesome. Um, and then on Sunday, April 3rd, we have the Hawks Halo Infinite LATAM 2v2. So go check all of those out. And uh, you can find everything that we just talked about over at noobcombo.com. You can also check out noobcombo.com for all your Halo esports needs. Fuck you, Maddie. Um, Will, what, what's, the, what, what's the next segment that we got? Roster Mania! Yes, yeah, some Roster Mania. Ooh. Some changes going on. Uh, we'll start with Quadrant. Nurex moves to head coaching. And Shad is added to the active roster. Yes. So making some moves there. Um, status Quo has some changes. Is it Nesty and Clutch with a Z? Added to the active roster. Uh, Wes isn't getting back in there. But no, different <laughs> different clutch coming along. He's not teaming up with Flame? No, 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 no not happening. <laughs> That'd be fucking hilarious. That would be something, wouldn't it? Oh, oh my man. God. It's, it clutch just enough. Well, I mean, wait, he'd have to wait till season two, though, because he works. He worked with. Yeah. So he could, yeah, he could, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, last team here, J-Lings. Uh, Morga, Cristola, Septic, and Quad. Yeah, they got picked up. Good the good on the boys. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that's all we got for Roster Mania. Before you get into the tournament league recaps, I just have a few scrims I want to go over with you, Will. Um, on March 23rd. March 23rd, Will. Faze went up against Space Station Gaming. Faze <laughs> uh, went seven and six. It was seven to six. Are you saying there's hope for Space Station? That or it's dark days for FaZe. Mm. 
I don't know what the fuck is going on there. A scrim's a scrim, right? We talk about it all the time. It's not an end all be all situation. Right. But I just I wanted to point that out because I'm like, oh, we, you know, every once in a while a scrim just sticks out to you and you're like, oh, that's a really close score for something that probably shouldn't have been that close. So there's that. On March 24th, uh, Cloud9 beating Optic Gaming 7-6. to six. So another very close scrim against the two teams. Arguably the two top teams right now in the league. What, what do you think, Will? Did you watch um, this scrim? I think place? this was like a late comeback for Optic. Like Cloud9 um, destroyed them in the beginning. Got it. And then Optic turned it around towards the end and got more games on them. Well... Kansas City is a month away, yep. so we'll just have to wait and see. Scrims are cool and all, but it doesn't equate to anything unless it's on land. And we we really, Kansas City will be the test to see what the fuck is happening at this point. Um, But speaking about phase, March 25th, Complexity tied 5-5 against phase. So, again. I don't know if that was good for complexity. They did win that open series event, which was pretty dope. Yeah. But like, I don't know if this was good on complexity or like phase dire straits, you know, nothing against complexity. Like they clearly have proven that they, they are valid opponents. They're worthy opponents because they, like they did take that open series event that week. So there's I, that. There's just something going on with FaZe where it feels like these scrims. Because when I, I've, I've tuned into Snipe Down playing with his teammates. Yeah. And it just seems like it's more like, it feels like they're playing matchmaking. Like they're not trying actual, I mean, maybe they discussed it beforehand, but just something's not clicking there. Right. And we're going to talk about, uh, you're going to go through the tournament recaps where, uh, I'll just say normally, where FaZe did, Im- like, did do well. Yeah. Uh, but... This brings it back to a, you'll talk about it, but it was an open series event where realistically three of the upper teams were in it. So, and, and when I mean upper, I'm not talking about like, you know, I'm not talking about an optic or a cloud nine or a sentinels or anything like that. I'm talking about like top four through six, top eight stuff like that so we'll see but yeah i'll 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 let you get to that because that's all the scrim recaps that i had but if you guys want to check out all the other scrim recaps that took place over the course of however fucking long you want to look back uh go to halodatahive.com it's good stuff it is great stuff and he just keeps fucking updating it with more shit so if you like stats Go to, go to halodatahive.com. And the scrims are on a per-region basis as well. So they have scrims for all the regions. You can go check them out. Do so. Uh, tournament re- tournament results as well. Um, series results, series breakdowns. Uh, as long as as long as long Halo Data Hive Halo is able to get the gamer tags that are being used, then he can get the stats for you. So that's really fucking cool. But Will, what do we got for the tournament league recaps for the last week? We'll start off with Halo Rec League FFA series. And here's your results. Your week two leaders tied for first is Evil Fud and Paradise. Tied for third is E7's Infinite, Super Main, V Finest, and Sky Blaster. Tied for seventh then would be Exotic Sniper, Mr. Achex, um, Troll Seth, and then in 10th place is Elite Instinct. Very nice. Next series, we have the HCS FFA series, and we'll start with the Mexico results. In fourth place, we had Grimsy. Third, uh, two television. Second, Lure. And first, going to Magicka. Out of Australia, New Zealand, in fourth place was Jordan. Third, Slays. Second, Sways. And first, uh, C.R. Aleo. Slays and Sways. Um, out of EU. In fourth was T-Banged. <laughs> T-Banged! <laughs> Third, a Snipe Drone. Oh, baby. Second was G- Glory GG's. <laughs> and first went to Shady. I'm fucking... Okay, you keep going. I need to see if we added that name to the list. Because if that's not on there, it fucking needs uh, to be. All right, all right. 
Um, for North America, in fourth place was Bobster. Third, Nesky. Second, Gun Collection. And first, Porky J. It is on there. Awesome. Thank God. Next tournament here, SLG in First Blood, 4v4 results. And third, fourth, we had Team American Sniper, which was Moe's, Clonely, Mista, and So Snaky. Uh, other third, fourth place team was uh, Cinta Negra, which was Gory, so- Sabrio, Cyrax, and El Ali. Yeah. Second, second went to Invictus, which was Yale King, uh, Lasco, Felonies, and Sports Better. And then first went to Team OEX. It was SLG Sika Chicken Legend. Next up, Esports Arena Series E Open Night. In third place, we had Team Torrent, which included Filthy G, Aperture, Hot Shot Ghost, and Huss. Second went to Incognito, Cycle, Carmea, Neuronical, and Piggy. And then first went to Team Pioneers, Tolik, Soul Snipe, Druck, and Manny. We had the Esports Arena Series E Pro Night take place as well. In second place was Xset, Kratos, Suspector, Mental, and Suppressed, if you don't remember. And first, Pioneers, Soul Snipe, Manny, Druck, and Swish. Next up, we had Oath and First Blood 2v2 results. In third and fourth, we had Meat Shields, which was Divine Damsel and Manny. And also Team Malicious, which was Malice and Titan. Second went to Hatred, which is Hativ and Minds. And first went to Sape Doubles, which was Seven and Kid Nasty. Next tournament here, Knights Arena Monthly Halo Infinite 4v4. Third, fourth place teams was Anomaly and Door, which included Mudshot, Perjury, uh, Synox, and FPS, and then Team Kanduro, Diru, uh, which included Breaking Shot, Rhett the Sweat, uh, Shokoi, and Bid Teaches. Second place went to Pioneers, Drux, Soul Knight, Tolik, and Manny. And first went to G2 times Phase. Um... Uh, it was Sab, Falcated, Boobadoo, and Bound. Sometimes, like, autocorrect is just, like, super aggressive. Yeah. And so when I try to type out Tolik, it's like, it's like talk. <laughs> I'm like, I d- know, Google. I know what the fuck I mean to say, and it's not talk. I, I am noticing Pioneers just getting in a ton of these tournaments here. They are. They had a couple uh, different people in their lineups, but yes, yeah. overall, yeah. Next tournament here, First Blood and Shadies. 4v4 series. In third, fourth, we had our boys, which was uh, Psykian? Uh, oh, it's Scion. I'm an idiot. It's Scion. Okay, there's an extra. Le- okay, it's Scion. Scion 2.0. Yeah. Monkey and Juan. Next team in third, fourth was BRC Hashi, which was Frankix, Zen, Maester, Zoro, and Silex. Second went to Young Cretans. This was Nalsec, Exude, Ramses, and Scuffy. And first went to Cat Smile Gaming. It was Outcast, Epi, Glory, and Marine. Next tournament here, Community Gaming Halo Infinite 4v4. In fourth place was the Wannabes, Jaren, Nox, Scoot, and Cynox. Third went to Anomaly Gaming, Decliner, Rails, Truth, and Batman. Second went to The Hand, which was Sylvanic, Exiode, Facti, and Bepix. And first went to Incognito, Piggy, Carmea, Cycle, and Neuronical. Whew. Here we go. HCS Open Series for North America. Fourth place went to Exet, Kratos, Suppress, Suspector, and Arctic. Third went to E United, Spartan, King Nick, Rain, and Rhyne Noob. Second went to Pioneers, Druck, Tolik, Manny, and Soul Snipe. And first went to Phase. Phase. Falcade, Boo Boo Snipe Down, and Bound. And Josh, would you like to talk about the notable game? Yes. So, Will, did you watch this? Parts. I kind of. I think I had it up while I was doing other things. Okay. So I included, like, in the Google Doc of the show, it's of the show, uh, Martin, who put the uh, fucking command in the chat. Also, welcome, Martin. Good to see you as well. Um, I, I included the game, uh, the LVT edited video of this. Uh, shout out LVT. Because this is this is phenomenal. So this is probably one of the greatest comebacks I've ever seen like ever in a, in a halo game. 
It was Pioneers versus United. Uh, it was Losers Finals. It was game one. Strongholds on recharge. And it was literally, it was fucking insane. For like the last few minutes. So, while the game started off back and forth between the two teams, United begin to take over the entire map, along with the Strongholds, taking a commanding lead, 246 to 132. 246 to 132. Okay? United need four seconds. Four seconds holding two strongholds to win the game. Okay? It was at that point, Will, where we witnessed an absolute breakdown. Get it? Get that meme from the CDL days? Oh, we're witnessing a breakdown. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, no. I brought that back. <laughs> Woo! Sorry, Optic. United only needed to control two strongholds for four more seconds, but the Pioneer squad had other things in mind. The Pioneers continue to hold the United roster and choke points throughout the map, working as a team, finishing kills, and getting time from the strongholds. After three minutes of game time, of being continually out-rotated and out-slayed, United were ready to make their final move and close out this game. 247, 248, 249, to nope! The last possible second... Tolik and Druk flood the B stronghold, take out Rain and Ryanub, and get the capture, all while Soul Snipe is being a nuisance to Spartan and King Nick around the elevator and the A stronghold. Pioneers are scoring yet again. But the insanity doesn't stop there. E United just said, fuck the B stronghold, and make a last-ditch effort to push to C. And holy shit, it was working. I say was, because Tolik made the perfect play at the perfect time. Flying through Whirlpool... Up to the A stronghold with the grapple shot, capturing A basically uncontested and putting E United back on their heels. And then, well, the following happened with the score being E United 249 to Pioneers 246. King Nick pushes back into B and captures it. Tolik takes down a weak King Nick in B at the last second. At the same time, Pioneers are capping C and E United is capping A. While the Pioneers succeeded in C, United actually failed to capture A, allowing Pioneers to get the reset. United make a last-ditch effort to get into B, but it didn't have enough time, and the Pioneers win the game 250 to 249. It was fucking bonkers. <laughs> they literally needed four seconds. Oh, my God. I, it, was, it was seriously insane. The last... Like, everything seemed, like I said, it was back and forth at the beginning of the game, right? And then around, like, the eight-minute mark or something like that, United just go on a fucking tear. And you think this game's in the bag. Like, there's no possible fucking way. And then, no, it, it happened. It absolutely happened. And tools went off in the cast. Yeah, I remember. I do remember hearing that. Yep. So, again, that the, the video is linked um, in the show notes. Go Go watch that. Uh, give LVT some love and just wow, what what an what a fucking bonkers game that was. You know when 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 they're when a team's down as bad as Pioneers was, they always say, oh, they're gonna have to play perfect Halo. I always say you also need a lot of fucking luck. Oh right? yeah, like this was that that point where like everything that they were doing was the right move at the right time. Yep, and you know you can decide to push a certain side of the map and the team just completely is not rotating that way. And it's, it falls through, right? This is where they, every call they made and every move they made was just perfectly worked to their advantage. It was like you said, it, there is luck involved, but it's also a two way street. There's two teams playing the game. So E United had to make, had to fuck up a lot <laughs> in order to make that happen. And Holy shit. They just, they, I, it just, I still, it just sits in the back of my mind that they literally needed four seconds. Sure. Four seconds. A desperate one point and did Yeah, and then they, they only needed one point at one point in time. It's like, and they just couldn't close the game out. Go, go watch that video, please. Go watch that video. It was, it was absolutely insane. All right. Believe it or not, we have more tournaments to talk about as well. Uh, we'll start, we'll, we'll go back to LVT's <laughs> Money Tuesday. Open number five. Right. Oh, he's drinking. He's not going to do the Mambo number Mambo five. Mambo number uh, five. <laughs> we'll, 
In third, fourth, we had team last second, which was Ampium and Struggle, and then Meatheads, which was Gunplection and Claytron. Second went to Timbers Esports, Pool and Bullet, and first went to Exceed, Evolving and Pyretic. We had the LFTG Halo Infinite 2v2 results, and third, fourth was Titan, which was uh, at NYC and Legend. Also, Villains, which was Demon Sue and Persecute. Second went to uh, Cinta Negra, Johan MC and Guardian, and first went to Abagotes, Abitur, and Carmea. I love how you can roll your R because I can't. So, like, if I tried to say it, I would just sound like an idiot. And, like, at least you can roll your <laughs> I tr- R. I try to. I, I try. No, it's good. I'm glad you, you do it because, like I said, I can't. Like, I don't know how to fucking do it. All right. We also had the Lady Spartan Pro Series. This is their qualifier number two take place. In fourth was Good Vibes, uh, which included Songfully, Veronica, Echidna, and Dreamy Dream. Third was Desensitized, which was Miss Heartbreak, Ideas, uh, Pink Sakura, and have we ever figured this one out? Biancus. Biancus. I always want to, I think the X in front means something, but it might. It very well might. Biancus is what we're going to go with. All right. right. Uh, In second place was Need Eights Bad. This is Miss Audie, Command Station, Divine Damsel, and Queen. And first went to Hydra Gaming. This is um, Miss Lacar, Janelle, Cranberry, and Minx. You know, Miss Audie's on that need eights bad, but I always see her in eights on her stream. I'm just saying. I think it's just like a name that's transcended <laughs> with them, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's what it is. Next tournament, Louis V. Titans Money Tuesdays 2v2 tournament. In third, fourth, we had Sarium, which included Nexi Sar and Struggle, and also Hate. Hatred. I had to move my cursor. Uh, this was uh, Hativ and Mines. And second went to Exceed. That included Evolving and Pyretic. And first went to Halo Reach Sweats. This is Hillbilly and... Vemzy. Vemzy with a new name. So I think it was Vemzy. I think that's what people were saying in the chat. And yeah, I think it was Vemzy playing under a Smurf. And then I don't know who Hillbilly is. But uh, the thing that I find funny is I would say the thing that I would find funny, but uh, first, Brian with the 20 month resub. Thank you so much, Brian. He says, hey, yo, I say, woo. Um, but <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Uh, what I find funny is if it was actually Vemzy playing under a Smurf, dude, can I have a heart to heart with you real quick? Vemzy? I know you don't listen to the show, but if you ever did and you listen to this episode in this segment in very particular fashion, I'm talking to you right now. You know, everybody called you a cheater. This doesn't help you. This doesn't help your case. So, I mean, it, it, it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Like people are going to think you what they think you, right? You can say whatever you want. You can do whatever you want, but people are going to have that preconceived notion in your mind. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying like to maybe help your case. And I'm not saying we have preconceived notions. I'm just saying what, what I see. Right. But if, if you want to like kind of quell those thoughts a little bit, you know, play under your actual tag, man. It's not, it's not difficult. You just sign into the other one. Right. It's a, you know, it's just, you, you pick the different, the profile. Simple. You know, you just turn on the Xbox, you go to your name at the top left, and you click change profile. Boom. Femzy. Done. Potentially a cheater. Who the fuck knows? But, uh, no, in all seriousness, he, he was called out a couple, if it was Femzy, he was called out a couple times on the stream. Um, I'm just going to say, it can only help you if you're playing on your original tag. But you guys were popping off. So, congrats on the win. All right, next up. Jeez, there's more qualifiers, people. <laughs> yeah, but these these ones, uh, these are cool because um, with these, the winner of each of these FFA get coverage to get get their tickets for uh, KC. Stands to go to KC. To them. Yep, just All right. So yes, we, it's the HCS Kansas City Major FFA qualifier number one. And we'll start with Mexico. Uh so your runners up fourth through second in order. Dragoon, Sentry, <laughs> and Johan MC. And runners up. 
in order. Yep. Like, like no way. Fourth and second. <laughs> and in first place, getting their ticket stamped to KC is Grim's Grim's D. There's a there's a T in there. There is a T. There's no X at the beginning. Thankfully. <laughs> Throws me off, man. Who knew? For Australia, New Zealand, in fourth through second. Sways, Aleo, and Bandit, and stamping their ticket to KC is Jordan. Easy name. Love Thank it. You. Uh, for EU, in fourth place, Hercules. Third was Glory. Second, Blizz. And first place going to KC is Mighty. So here's my question. So Jordan makes it from Australia, New Zealand. What happens when the admin starts calling people over? Like, what if somebody's there named Jordan? Oh, yeah. And they just forget that it's based off Gamertag. Like, Jordan oh, shit. Station four? Yeah. How many Jordans are popping up at Station 4? That's what I want to find out. <laughs> Stupid joke. I'm sorry. Whatever. All right. And then for North America, fourth through second, Perjury, Gunplexion, and OG Halo Noob. And going to KC is going to be reburst in first place. Very nice. Um, I don't say it in this episode for upcoming tournaments because it's next week uh, on the show. Like, it'll be when we're recording. Um, but Monday next week is the second qualifier. So, again, another four people will be invited to KC. So, Will, we'll talk about that next week. All right. And here we go. We'll go to the HCS EU Super. Super. In fourth place was Jaylings Esports. This was Morga, Quad, Septic, and Cristola. Third went to Quadrant, SLG, Fragger, Chick, and Shad. Second, Navi. Respectful Jimbo to Foxy oh, there it is. and Kimbo. And first went to Ascend, Shady, Snipe Drone, Legend, and Sick. I will say, I was rooting for the underdogs Navi in that grand final. They didn't perform the I think way. everyone was rooting for them. Just someone, you know, someone to knock off the Kings, you know? Yeah. But that's my question. Like, can anybody beat them? And what, they took off two games? One game? Two. Two? Two? No, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think two. Yeah, I think two. Yeah. I think two. Right? Two? Sounds about right. Sure. But either way. Didn't go to a bracket reset, that's for sure. Um, and then it does say here, or what did happen, uh, Jaylings, Quadrant, Navi, and Ascend earned tickets to the HCS Kansas City Major. So we'll see you all there. Fuck yeah. And then uh, for those, uh, we talked about it earlier, but um, the, just scrolling up real quick, the the Open Championships that are going to be taking place this weekend, again, that the in addition to those four teams from EU, Another two are going to get travel coverage to KC. So it's going to be a good time all around. I think a lot of good competition is going to be coming out of it because, uh, as we've mentioned before, as Heinz clarified, uh, teams that already have earned travel coverage are not able to compete in these open championships. So it's going to be a lot of teams vying for that final spot, right? Yeah. So I think uh, I think a lot of teams are going to be coming out with the best that they got. Um, and, yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of top AM um, or realistically top professional squads coming out of it that, I mean, obviously aren't in those already invited teams. So it'll be a fun time. Can't wait. All right, Will. You ready for the topic? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't sound so excited. Oh, shit. Perfect timing. Justin with the 15 month resub bringing the woos in the chat, baby. Uh, before we get into some bullshit, uh, all right, let's move on to our topic. Uh, competitive integrity, the HCS EU super. Um, okay. So before, before I even start talking about this, Will, I just want to throw this out there. This was in game three. Okay, so this was this was Quadrant versus Jaylings in the loser bracket semifinal. So loser goes home. This was game three. It's a best of five series. Okay, and the series was already tied 1-1. Okay, so this game was not a deciding game in the series. Yep. Okay. We talk, there's a reason why I'm mentioning this at the forefront. Because we talk about it all the time. Just because you lose a game doesn't mean you lost the series right away, right? It's what you do as a team to get yourself out of that rut and fight your way back through the series and try to win the series, right? This was not a deciding game, okay? Regardless, what happened should not have happened, what we're about to talk about, and 
again, prefacing, don't want to shit on anybody. Just want to bring to the forefront the situation that happened in case you may have missed it. Okay, and then we'll obviously talk if we want to keep talking about it. So, Quadrant versus J Ling's uh, loser bracket semifinal, game three, CTF on Bazaar. The time ends with the score being tied two to two, sending the game into an overtime round, right? We know yep. what the overtime round is like. First team to score within that five minutes wins the game, right? Once the overtime round begins, it wasn't even streamed. Like, they didn't cut to the broadcast because of what happened right after it started, basically. Okay? Jaylings get basically the perfect start. With all four on Quadrant dead, they have rockets, they have fresh overshield, and they're advancing on the flag. What's up? They had one rocket. They fired the first one right away. But yeah. Right, but, but like they had rockets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Uh, at that point, one of the three observers in the game lags out and another observer within the game decides to end the game. This is from Cristola. Cristola states, um, Cristola of Jaylings, by the way, states, we just got absolutely robbed in the super. We should have been up two one in the series after this. There's no excuse for the admins ending it this way. There were three observers in our game. One observer lagged out. Then the actual host, another observer decided to end it. It was so tough to mentally reset after that happened. And that's another reason why I brought it at the, at yeah. the beginning. It's what you do as a team after anything happens, a game loss, whatever it may be, to mentally reset and get yourself back into the game and try to win the series. Okay? Once the game was restarted for a second time, the rules were first flag cap wins. So they had to restart it completely, right? Like full time limit, but they, they were treating it like overtime rules because you can't start an overtime round. Yeah. Quadrant got the flag cap along with the map win to make the series two to one and quadrant won the fourth map to win the game. Uh, they, they won the fourth game to win the series three to one from the official face it rule set. There are two rules that I, that are pointed out here. The first one is 6.7. If a player tournament official or game observer fails to load into a game or match or loses their connection to the game during or prior to the start of the game and match, the game and match may be restarted from the beginning. Okay. That sounds like that's what happened. But literally the point, the rule right after that completely contradicts it. Rule 6.8 is if a tournament official or game observer disconnects from a game after the game and match has begun, but all players remain in the game, the game will continue. And that is the rule that was literally broken by them, by the face it observer who ended the game. So from septic, he asks, so will anything be done about this clear breach of the rule set? And then includes the rule, right? And then from snipe down, he states, Waiting for this to be addressed as well, considering it's in the rule book. It seems the people who had control weren't aware of the rule book itself. Not sure how anyone could end that game with any knowledge whatsoever of how Halo works. I don't, I don't know about that. But that's, that's, that's going a little too far. Yeah, in my book. Yep, I agree. Um, and then Tashi states uh, to Septic, "Hey Rob, we'll debrief with the admin observer team with entire si with and ensure situations like this are appropriately handled going forward. I understand how frustrating it must be. This can't happen again in the future." And then he also states, and this is in reply to Snipe Down and others. Hi guys, this has been addressed with the admin and production teams, and Richie spoke with one of Rich Hines, that is, spoke with one of the players earlier today. Super unfortunate situation, of course. We are doing what we can to ensure it doesn't happen again. So that's the situation, right? A yeah. clear rule was broken by the observer within the game based off of 6.8. 6.7 and 6.8 completely contradict one another. Not really. I mean, they, they literally do. No, because one's talking about prior. 6.7 is game observer fails to load into a game or match, lose a connection to the game during or prior to the start. So, like, they're talking about, like, during the start or prior to the start of the game. Sure. That they, they may restart. Yep. This one says after the game has begun. So realistically, they're 
that observer observer lagged out at the start of an overtime round. So I think they just got confused where they're like, I mean, how many freaking restarts do they probably have to do during a tournament where it's like, oh, the round's starting and I lagged out. Let's restart again. See, I, no, I, I understand where you're coming from. The thing that I would do, and I, I think I said this in the Discord as well, this is what I would do. I if For 6.7, and I'll, Justin will read your comment in a second as well, and Tools, welcome. Uh, I, it, it, for 6.7, to, let me know if this makes sense to you, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, for 6.7, remove tournament official or game observer. Just remove it. Just keep, if a player... Everything okay? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I <laughs> oh, I saw what the fuck that was. Oh my god. You're just you're just so uh you're of oh what the fuck? You're a popular man. You're just a popular man, Will. Let's keep rolling. <laughs> that's but that's that's what I okay, so um Tool says also, welcome, oh. like I said. Um, observer should never have lead ever. Uh, always have the players host the lobby. That way you can never fuck it up, and we make sure to never have host. Um, so my problem, I think my problem with that, because I can see where you're coming from, Tools. My problem is in an, in the online environment, right? Is the point of them observing, and again, I don't know, I'm just asking, is the point of them observing to have like a neutral host so that way whatever player or whatever team doesn't have a quote-unquote advantage in hosting the game? Again, I'm asking. I don't know. For me, it's an assumption. Justin says, my question about this is, is there a difference between this and a bad icing call in hockey or an unnecessary whistle that stops a breakaway? I know now you're going over the actual rule book, but like mistakes in sports happen from officiating down to play. You've seen it in hockey, having blatant goals called off or football, having a clear penalty or touchdown called off. Absolutely. We do see that all the time. Yeah. Um, hockey has time stoppages in their game. Halo does not. Oh, that's what tools replies with. Um, tool says no host in this game, all dedicated servers. Right. So like it, it goes off of all players in the lobby of where the hope, like, so like the a ho an observer hosting is what he's saying is the problem because then they wouldn't have had control over the the sure. outcome of the players. But then what happens if like players just refuse to end a game if something goes wrong? You know, I think you could address it at that point too if they decide not to end it. See, I one thing that is weird is that observers will impact where the host uh, goes due to their location. They need to remove that. Okay. Like the, the observer connection should just be the observer connection to whatever the host is off the players. Is what he's, yeah. Sure. I mean, that makes sense for players from the player side, but then if you look at the broadcast side and you want a crisp, clean broadcast and the observers haven't choppy legged. Right. That's, and it's not LAN. Like it's mm -hmm. fucking. All I know is that based off of reading reading the rules, I like what you were talking about, Will, with the during or prior. It's When I read 6.8, they literally didn't do that. So, Tashi addressed it. Um, clearly, communication needed to be set. I don't know if they're going to modify the rule book as it stands. This was face it's rule book, by the way. Okay. Let's keep that in mind too. This was, this was face it's rule book that they have on all of their web pages, like with their rule sets, you can see it there. Um, this was not within the HCS like player handbook or code of conduct or anything like that. This was not in this, these word for words were not in there. Yeah. So, um, Yeah, I, I guess I'll leave it at that. Just mistakes happen, right? Like, not everything is perfect. This observer should have let the game run. They didn't. I totally get that they're in 
hours long of a tournament, right? And that the, like, I'm, I'm not trying to make excuses, but how easy could it have been that they thought that an overtime round was the start of a game? Like they've have been doing all day and one person legs out and they're like, okay, we're ending it and just restarting it. Like we have been all day, not, you know, just not making the mental connection. Now should, should they? Yes, because they're the oversight of the tournament. They, sh- you know, they're, they're there to uphold these rules. But, Competitive integrity. Um, say mistakes happen. I mean, people, I think people forget how easy it is to make a mistake. Right. And yes, we want the best thing for, for Halo and this doesn't help, but like they still had their five minute overtime. It, they saw it game four. It broke it's game four and five. If they would have won. Yep. Um, they say, you know, it was hard to recover from this. That's kind of, that's their fault. That's not on, like, the team should have been able to go, okay, let's do it again. Let's let's have something, let's change it up just a little bit, do it again, and, and get recontrol. Yeah. Uh, Tool states, we have precedence for the ruling anyway. Two times we've had observers lag out of, uh, lag out of G2 matches on land. They just continue playing. Uh, and he says mistakes happen, but making sure you have fail safes in place so that your ass is covered is, uh, is what they should take away. Am I missing something in that statement? That sounds weird. Uh, observers should never have lead in the game and this problem never happens. So he's saying like, if the, if the players had lead, the game wouldn't have ended. It would have continued on. Right. Because it literally wouldn't have been ended because the host observer ended it. Yes. Um, Justin says, I just uh, saw how disrespectful pros on Twitter were about this, and it irked me. Don't get me wrong. I've cussed out some refs but in my day, but, like, it's being addressed. They'll try not to make the mistake in the future. All my coaches would say the same thing. Mental toughness. Sucks that it happened, but you got to be mentally tough. Um, it's it, and Again, part of me agrees with that, too, because it's... But the the shitty thing is is that it happened, right? Yeah. It you could and, we can't go back in time, we can't change it, we can't fucking what the what uh, what was the blatant missed pass interference call that like the Saints or whatever complained that they would have gone to the Super Bowl oh, if that yeah. was called on them, right, right? Right. You go back and you look at that play, you're like that was literally blatant missed pass interference, like the dude was rocked off the <laughs> sideline and he and there was no call. And yeah, you can look back at that type of situation. Well, you who's in in with the, with this? I don't know if you saw. They yes, they had overshield in this game. I don't feel like overshield's as powerful as it used to be. No, it's um. Not. They had one rocket. Yep. And they were running the flag double doors. Now, when you run the flag on staggered respawns, the the other team is most likely going to spawn basement underneath rockets, mm-hmm. and maybe on the fifty yard line somewhere. Who's to say that flag stop doesn't get? Or flag run doesn't get stopped right there, and it flips on them anyway. Like, right. It's the same thing about that blatant mass, uh, missed pass interference call. Like, let's say you did call it. Mm-hmm. There's still time left in the game for you to fuck up. Yeah. It's not saying you're going to automatically win the game. It's not. I'm not trying to be against Jalings right now. No, no, no. Right. It's just it, a shitty situation. Yeah. But at the same time, you look at it, and you're like, okay, if you got that flag cap, yeah, you're going in with the momentum in game four, but... You're, you're not guaranteed to win that game. You're just not. Yeah, you're going in with the momentum. You're going in with the mental toughness. But if you weren't able to regather yourselves after the shitty situation that took place, for lack of a better phrase, you don't deserve to be there. Like, it, there's a difference between... Like, this is why you see... It. When we talked about Sentinels back in the day, when we talk, I mean, CLG Optic Talks, right? <laughs> it, you, we talk about... Um, cloud nine. Now, like you talk about, uh, ascend. Now you talk about the chiefs. Now you talk about, um, Pittsburgh Knights Now, right? Everybody in their respective regions. It doesn't matter if they go down a game or two, they take it back and they win the fucking series. And again, this is nothing against jailings. It's just, it's a shitty fucking situation that happened, but you can't go back and reverse time. And people are saying, oh, they should at least get like the $5,000 that they were robbed. You don't fucking know that. Yeah, there's still two games to play after that. Exactly. You you don't know. You don't know if they're going to win. You don't know if they're going to continue on. 
You just you just don't know. And then the other people are like, you could at least give them a thousand bucks for their troubles. It's like, I get it, guys. It sucks. Like my thing is, think about if this was the World Championships, right? And this this a hundred thousand dollar tournament that took place. Like, yeah. let's keep that in mind. There's a big chunk of change on the line here. But like, if we're if if we're thinking grand scheme, right? This is in this is at Worlds, uh, and this was on land. For fuck's sake, right? And this happened. You would hear an uproar from the crowd, but what are you going to do? Yeah. You literally cannot go back in time at that point. You can't change what happened. No, it's, it sucks. Well, I get it. They. <laughs> yep, it's been addressed with the admins of Face It by Tashi himself and Heinz. Yep. Um. There's nothing left to do but move on from it and learn from it. Right. It's it, This is my other thing, too, is, like, you could... Let's say you do give them prize money, right? Not for the place that they earned, right? Yeah. Um. Actually, let's read this first here. Uh, we'll see you later, Tools. If you're, if you're, if you're already gone, you have a great night. Enjoy the twos. We'll, we'll be watching when we're done. You best believe it. Uh, Justin said, absolutely bring it to, bring it to light. That's right. But once it's addressed, move on. You may not like the outcome, but you got to buckle down and play your game. Obviously, if they won, we never hear about this, but they lost and feel like they got robbed, which is what they kind of did, but shit happens. Also, controller disconnect costs uh, reciprocity fifty thousand, <laughs> or whatever the prize pool was. Right, and that wasn't like it, but at the same time, that controller disconnect wasn't like an admin deal, right? That wasn't yeah. like a rule break that was literally in your rule book. That, I mean, the rule was literally make sure you have a good cable that doesn't disconnect. You right, know what I mean, right. Like, that's kind of was- and I, I was happy that. NV1, don't get me wrong, but like I felt for Spartan so fucking much because that's devastating. It's devastating. But it's just Jaylings. The only thing we want, and I, I'm gonna speak to I'm speaking not only to Jaylings, but to the entire overall competitive Halo community, what our show is based around, right? We all want this game to be the most competitive it can possibly be, right? In terms of the competitive space, for those who enjoy social playlists and the campaign and everything, we do too. That's fine. I'm talking just to the competitive community right now. I don't want my fucking ass chewed because of it. We all want this game to have the most competitive integrity it can possibly have, right? We want rules to be followed. We don't want these situations to happen. But the fact of the matter is, and we we talked about another situation before we started recording the show. Everybody's human, like Will said, right? Everybody is human. Everybody makes mistakes. I hate because we talk about competitive integrity all the time on this show. It eats at me that this happened in the first place because Jaylings, you never know. You never know what could have happened, right? right? You very well could have won that game and won that series, but we just won't know. And that sucks. But what I can tell you is this. Like Will's already said before, it's to to our knowledge, to our collective knowledge, it's been addressed, right? There is literally nothing that we can do except hope that it has been fixed. Voice your concerns respectively, of course. Like Justin said, bring things to light, of course. But at the same time, this is the beautiful part, Jaylings. And any other team, any other team that is competing in the HCS or community tournaments, whatever it may be, you always have another opportunity. And for J-Lings, your next opportunity is Kansas City. On LAN, against whatever team you face off against. That anger you feel, that feeling of being robbed, don't let it eat away at you. But just make something out of that. Bring that out into your skill of the game. Come out stronger, faster, harder, Kanye. Just just (laughs) come out like it's loser's final, game five, game seven, 
game 11, whatever it may be, 49-49 Slayer, come out with that intensity every single game and prove that you belong there. Because guess what? If you don't prove that you belong there, no one's going to remember, to be honest with you. Just come out, make names for yourselves, prove the doubters wrong, just make that hate into passion and come out swinging. Not literally, you know. Don't be throwing hands, but like put it on the sticks. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I'll say. Anything you want to add, Mike Hit Will? <laughs> wasn't the hat no, this time, though. No, it wasn't. I actually <laughs> smacked it with my hand. <laughs> Will's oh. throwing hands. Oh, wait, shit. Um, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Wrong, Will. Well, yep. Yeah. Uh, gosh, yeah. I still... I think Justin mentioned... Someone mentioned it earlier in the chat, but, like... Sure. The, the amount of backlash that was on Twitter, too, oh is, my like... Oh, God. That's, that's the last thing I want to say is... Um, Bunch of y'all just fucking degenerates out there. You can't handle any sort of drama. Whoa! So, like... You're calling out literal pros at this point. Um, Yeah, it was handled. <laughs> it was talked about. It's like... The, we, the, uh, the word pro should be out the window at this point because th- these are... Professional crybabies. That's what it feels like a lot of the time. Not it, all of them. Not all of them. Not no, all no, of them. No, but I'm just like, I'm so tired of it, man. Yeah, I hear you. I they all you. need fucking PR reps. Just take take your fucking Twitters sure. away. Use it for DMs between your teammates and whatnot. But goddamn, y'all are digging yourselves holes. That's the thing. That's the <laughs> thing too. Is that like, I mean, I rant a lot on this show too, and I've said some things I probably piss a lot of people off. Uh, but the thing is, for me, it's it is disheartening to see a lot of people like just bitch and bitch and bitch about things and them thinking that the only way to get things fixed is if I keep bitching about it. No, you may think that's the way it is, but just to bring back a phrase, stop being a shitter. It's actually, it it really, what the fuck am I trying to say? There's something that popped into my head. Oh, fuck. Um, oh, I know what I was going to say. To all the pros, whatever, that are that are online just shitting on the entire situation, blah, 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 and being heated and being like, when are things going to change? This shit needs to change. This is unacceptable, blah, blah, blah. What would you do? I don't see you providing any sort of help or guidance on what you would do in the situation. The only thing that I ever saw was that's going to cost somebody their job or they should just pay them. No, a, it shouldn't cost somebody their job. If they make a, if they make a single mistake, we're not talking about, now, this gets into that whole argument of like, well, what if it was a heart surgeon and they fucked up and killed somebody? Does that person lose their job? It's like, this isn't rocket science. People make mistakes. People are human. It doesn't deserve for somebody to be a fucking, to lose their job over a ruling like this. Conversations happened. Hopefully change takes place. And then also to the people like, oh, I should just pay them. What difference does that make? They get a little money in their pocket, which, uh, great. I mean, more money, that's fantastic. But at the same time, you can't guarantee they're going to win the series. It sucks. It does. But if you're not going to provide valued feedback and suggestions as to how to improve, what the fuck are you wasting your time for online bitching about something that realistically didn't concern you? Obviously, it would concern you if you were involved. But you weren't. Yeah. Um, 
All right, last thing I'm going to say here because Justin brings up this point in chat, and he states, Will, Silos, and I had this conversation. Where's the, this is awesome. Look at this cool thing in Infinite. All we keep seeing is crying, and it's disheartening. We love the game. Call out BS in a respectful manner and try to uplift the scene. And that's just it, is there's, what, what, what positivity is our names in the scene really bringing? It doesn't seem like that's there. Um, it's, it is a lot of just complaining and you um, it's almost like the, the pros are like kind of choking out their own scene. Sure. And I, and I will admit that I've added fuel to that fire, especially on this show. It's, it's for me, it comes from a place of, and I've talked about it before, well, it comes from a place of passion, but you're right. I also should look at this retrospectively and be like, there are a lot of really cool things that are happening. There are a lot of great people in this community that are creating content and or trying to make content around the game that they love and the franchise that they love and the community that for all intents and purposes, they love, <laughs> right? We should, Halo community shows it in a funny way, man. That's all it is, is like, we're passionate. Will. We're passionate. <laughs> but, but no, like, it but like if, bad. if you are on the, like, I was just thinking like, if you're on the, if you're on the outside looking in at Halo and you try to get in the scene and like you start following the pros and all you see is this negativity from the pros about the game that they're playing and things they want changed and all that. It's like, that doesn't really entice someone to come into the scene. No. Um, you know, the, the people who have been around a while have been around a while, but, and they want what they want. I get that. Um, but I just don't see the, the, the new people, like, I don't know. Not, a, I feel like not a lot of new names are coming up in Halo. Like you talk about all the new people in Call of Duty. Sure. Scum's been around forever. Um, mm. but there's, there's names popping up. These rookies popping up on teams all the time. And it, it feels like we don't really get that much in Halo. Um, with like someone who just rises out of nowhere. I don't know what, if this might be a whole different topic, but I feel like there's some sort of something going on where. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where to go with it because you can look at both sides, right? Yeah. Um, there's obviously problems with infinite, the community complaining about it. It's, it's, I get, I get complaining and wanting change, but I feel like there's a respectful way to do it. And yeah. that has not been handled this, this far in. And they said they're making changes. I think honestly, we're, I'm hoping that we get a big season two update and that, will hopefully fix a lot of things. Is it going to be everything we want? No, but that has to come in chunks as they've stated. And I just got to keep hoping that it's going to get better. Now, if it's six months down the line, you know, we're in season three going into season four and things aren't looking to be changing. I would, I can understand more feedback coming their way, but again, just feedback's a term to use feedback. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of screaming is what's going to come their way. Yeah, Not for me. It, just, it is just general. like, like Justin said, it's disheartening to see all this crap be put out there about Halo when like, I'm, I do enjoy playing. I enjoy the ranked games. I take it for what it is like. And seeing everyone just go, go in on it sucks. Uh, Justin says, Ubernick, Real Life, Spartan, Lady Echidna, people like that are the light right now. And all the great podcasts, obviously. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Like us. Yes. We're great. Yeah, thanks, Justin. Fuck everyone else. <laughs> the best. <laughs> That's just gets rude. Uh, I know, right? I'm, try I'm, try <laughs> I'm tearing down the community. <laughs> um, so, yeah. All in all, um, J-Lings, it sucks, but uh, we can't time travel yet. So, yeah. yeah. You got to take it on the chin and come back stronger. That's what you got to do. And obviously we just hope that this doesn't happen again. Um, Because yeah, it, it sucks, but what are you going to do? Will that's it for our topic. So yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a little while. It's been a while since I've been singing this fucking song. Don't DMCA me. Uh, so our friends and partners over at uh, Podcast Evolved. New website, by the way. Go check it out. BT Dubs. Uh, it is, Will's going to talk about it later, but it's called EvolvedHalo.com. Your home 
for Halo. Um, they do our Map Legends segment on this show. They also release it as a separate YouTube video you should go check out as well because, you know, love the content. Well, it's time for season two of Map Legends. And this time, it's all about infinite maps. But don't worry. We're not talking about launch site. That fucking garbage ass shouldn't be in SWAT, shouldn't be in 4v4 map. And no, we're not talking about Behemoth, which at one point was in ranked. God fucking knows why, I don't know. But it's been removed since. Also shouldn't be in 4v4, but that's that's the point. No, 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 no. We're going to talk about an actual competitive map. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk about Recharge. So, Will, without further ado, if you would be so kind, to uh, switch over the scene to Map Legends. And we're going to get going in three, two, one, go. Welcome, Spartans, to Series 2 of HES Pro Talk Series Map Legends. Presented by Evolved, your home for Halo. I am your host, Oren, and on each episode of Map Legends, I will guide you through the setting and lore behind Halo's competitive multiplayer maps. In today's episode, I will cover Recharge from Halo Infinite. Recharge is a medium scale asymmetrical multiplayer map released with Halo Infinite and supports the Slayer, Attrition, Oddball, and Strongholds game types. From a lore perspective, Recharge is set within a neglected hydroelectric resource facility constructed by resource infrastructure and automation giant Axis. When operational, these facilities maintain sustainable and efficient amounts of renewable energy for both colony worlds under the United Earth government and those which remain independent. Axis has regrettably evolved into an abusive corporate bureaucracy by exercising their monopoly on vital water and mineral wealth to gain political influence on several independent colony worlds. A disappointing reality is Axis began their journey as a colonial startup, renewing contracts during the insurrection with the UNSC military. But by the end of the Human Covenant War, their wealthy financial standing and interstellar reach tempted Axis's leadership to seek their aforementioned political influence through secret back dealings. In recent years, some efforts have been considered to combat these Axis-backed independent movements that directly oppose the UEG and UNSC. Dr. Halsey, for example, devised a plan in which the UNSC would infiltrate tertiary access facilities and redirect their resources away from independent colonies. Secondarily, during the infiltration, UNSC operatives could inject misinformation schemes crafted by the Office of Naval Intelligence to weaken Axis's back dealings. In addition to Axis, the following are industrial companies with civilian roots and a history of working with the UEG or UNSC. Jotun Heavy Industries, Traxxas Heavy Industries, Oros Trading Company, Lian Dormund Corporation, Lethbridge Industrial, and Aquarius Terraforming Solutions, to name a few. To learn more about industrial, resource, and manufacturing companies, read stories such as Dirt from Halo Evolutions, Halo New Blood, and Halo Contact Harvest. To learn more about the contested relationship between the United Earth Government and independent colonies, read Halo Envoy, Halo Last Light, and Breaking Strain from Halo Fractures. And that will do it for Recharge on this episode of Map Legends. Let us know in the chat and in the comments which Halo Infinite competitive multiplayer map you want us to cover next. You can check out Map Legends Series 1 on Evolve's YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to HCS Pro Talk and Podcast Evolved 
on their respective podcast feeds and YouTube channels to stay up to date on the latest competitive Halo news and to learn more about Halo's expansive lore. I've been your host, Oren, and Evolve. That was cool. That was awesome. Uh, shout out to, again, the podcast Evolved crew. Thank you all so much for creating the Map Legends segment for our show. It's greatly appreciated. And it's fucking rad. You know? And like Warren said, if you want to check out all the other previous Map Legends segments, obviously, you know, listen to our show because we're cool. But uh, go check out the YouTube channel. It's all on there, too along with all the other fantastic shows that they do. Will. Yes. Let's do the regular news. Two, count them, two silver debrief blog posts. One's called Just Beyond Our Reach. <laughs> and the other one is called Contact, which is based off the first episode of the Halo show on Paramount Plus. They're both by Alex Wafer. They're both on HaloWaypoint.com. You should go read them. Um, huge, I should just say this. If you have not watched the Halo show on Paramount Plus and you do not want to be spoiled by anything that happened, then do not read the contact article uh, because that literally goes beat for beat throughout through the entire episode. But if you want further information on said episode, like who some characters were, uh, like the, the weird lady in the black costume thing with like the neck thing that went up to here, you can learn who that is. It's in the article. So go read it. And also, if you're worried about the chief taking his helmet off, you can go fuck yourself because nothing can please you in life. Ouch. <laughs> I mean, if you're really going to bitch about that, good Lord. All right, Halo and Wolverine, yes, Yup. No, it's not. No, it, unfortunately it's not Marvel. That's that'd be cool, but no, uh, they're a boot comp. Well, they're like a, a clothing company, I guess you could yeah, say we're a clothing company. Yeah. 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 They make boots. They do. So, uh, got you some, got some halo boots. Yeah. Halo boots. The first drop dropped today and it sold out like instantly which is insane to me like, it, I people think, love boots i didn't think there was that big of a market for halo boots <laughs> all the boots <laughs> so if you want to get in on subsequent drops because this is the first of many apparently um i don't know if they're all going to be boots but you may have other things that you could buy look at all those look boots. All those, the boots the boots uh so you may have upper other boots opportunities Opera boots and ease. <laughs> I've done. Uh, For a Spartan, every step matters. When your greatest weapon is speed, you don't have the time to be weighed down by heavy gear. Wolverine Ultra Spring Cushioning delivers a lightweight, energized ride never before experienced in a work boot. Energized ride in a boot. <laughs> what the fucking shit? All right. So they're, they're boots. Um, Will, guess what? What? Something that happened today, they're like, I don't know why I'm so surprised by this, but 343 is in the giving mood. This is my Halo support. In-game event, March 29th, 2022. An issue was discovered in the final few hours of the hate will. Uh oh, an issue was discovered in the final few hours of the Halo Infinite Tactical Ops SWAT event last Tuesday. March 22nd, that prevented all event challenges from progressing. Thank you to everyone who followed a ticket with Halo support to report this issue. To make up for this progression blocker, all players, all players who participated in the SWAT event 
during the final week. So March 15th through the 20. Oh, there's a typo. March 15th through March 22nd, not February 22nd, will be automatically granted all 10 rewards from the event pass along with the weekly ultimate. <laughs> What's even better about all of this is that we'll literally stay up till how long? Like 3.30 a.m. finishing my fucking shit. <laughs> to get the ultimate? <laughs> Not this one. It would have been the other one. Okay. Uh, I'm way, fine. I'm funny. fine. So, thank you for joining us for a SWAT event. And please keep the feedback and continue filing bug tickets at their support site. So, if you logged a match from March 15th through the 22nd. I didn't play TAC Ops because I was like, I'm done with the pass. I'm done with it. Oh, well, I mean, did you really need the ultimate? No, it's an armor emblem. Oh. It's not great. Well, I mean, I, I, in my I, I, opinion, I, I, if you like it, that's up to you. But no. There you go. Positivity. It's not for me. It might be for you. Still ass. So, <laughs> uh, I don't know what the weekly was, but sure. There you go. We all got it now. If you played TAC Ops. Oh, yeah, true. Sorry, Will. Um, uh, uh, no, the one I stayed up for was the ultimate green visor. Oh, yeah. And now I have a purple armor with the green visor kind of going with, like, the uh, the goblin vibe. There you you know, know, the, the green goblin? The green goblin vibe. Wow. Yeah. You fucking, what is it, William H. Macy? Is that who that is? Who plays it in the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies? Uh, n- <sighs> Am I, I might What's be totally the, wrong. It's not, no, it's not Macy. Um, I am spacing on his name. Holy shit. Spider-Man. Great, great actor. William Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe, that's it. Why did I think William H. Macy? William H. Macy. I don't know why I thought him. Willem, William. I mean, still kind of a weird looking dude. So yeah, sure. <laughs> it, it, it tracks. It tracks. Justin says, so happy I went to sleep and said, yeah. Um, so that happened. All right, Will, you want to talk about porn? We made condom references <laughs> last week. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what the, the fuck's hell? happening anymore. That was weird. <laughs> well, remember how we had a lot of condom references last episode? Yeah. Sure. What if I told you that Frank O'Connor literally references porn? What? Tying it full circle. Let's go. What? <laughs> Let's do this. Inside Halo's Universal Aspirations this is by Mike Hoom and Gene Park of the Washington Post. Yes, if you haven't seen this article floating around. It's an article. We're going to read through some of it. No, it's not all of it. It may look like it's all of it. It's not. I took out everything related to the Halo Infinite TV show. I mean, not Halo Infinite TV show, the Halo TV show, uh, because there was a huge fucking section devoted to that, and we don't need to talk about that. So, um, by the way, if you want our five-second opinion on the first episode of the show, we enjoyed it. Right, Will? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Frank O'Connor, franchise creative director for Halo, said he and his team have likely evaluated tens of thousands of proposals from a plethora of companies asking to work with the Halo IP. The potential partners range from promotional opportunities to novels to screenplays. With so many people clamoring for a piece of the chief, how do they decide what new ideas are okay as 343 tries to grow but also protect the Halo IP. Well, it's kind of like porn, O'Connor said, of the opportunities that ultimately make sense for Halo. You know it when you see it. What the fuck? <laughs> when I fucking read that for the first time, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know it when you see it. Well, Frank, how much fucking porn you watching, bud? Like, Frank. you have a smorgasbord, a charcuterie board, a charcuterie board. board. <laughs> Frank, are you okay? Do you? Oh my God, dude. Uh, Frank's what? got a literal fucking charcuterie board. Of fucking board. He's like, ah, that's a good one. I know it when I see it. Like, oh my God. Oh, fucking ana- There's so many other analogies. Dude, I know. It's like the Nike logo. You know it when you see it. It's like hey, Chief's helmet. You know it when you see it. Or it's like porn. Just do it. 
<laughs> oh wait, oh wait, that's Nike. We're gonna Will's back from going to the bathroom real quick. Yeah, you fucking spot you respawned yeah. back in the chair. That was a fucking dumb pun. Oh yeah, let's move on. So we talked about porn. <laughs> uh we no longer need to talk about porn. We're just gonna move on. Oh shit, now we're dropping frames. What is happening? What is happening today? Fuck! And yeah, we're fine. It's point. It's one percent. Yeah, it was weird. All right. Halo is currently engaged in its most ambitious expansion yet. A mul- a major multi-platform push. The studio hopes will broaden the game's player base and introduce newcomers to the celebrated space odyssey. Um, it's on off the internet. Yeah, what the fuck? So. In late November of 2021, 343 released the highly anticipated game, Halo Infinite, the latest chapter in the revered series and one designed to fully evolve Halo from a collection of one-off titles to an ongoing live service property along the lines of Destiny 2 or Fortnite, allowing players to linger in Halo's world and enjoy a continuous stream of new content. On March 24th this year, in tandem with Showtime, the studio has also debuted a new live-action series on the streaming platform Paramount+. Plus. It is the culmination of efforts to adapt the story for films and TV that began more than 15 years ago, and at various points has involved names like Peter Jackson and Steven Spielberg. Quote, I think it's a huge opportunity for us being able to go off console and think about a broader audience, said Bonnie Ross, general manager of Microsoft 343 Studios, who pointed to Marvel's approach as an example of how Halo hopes to position itself for multiple platforms, feature a uniform aesthetic, but also differences between the games and shows or films. Quote, and I think both with the Halo TV series bringing up in a broader audience with free to play, bringing in a broader audience. And then for us, I think it's really is learning about how to be an ongoing service and having an ongoing dialogue with fans and getting the infrastructure right. But as Ross notes, even as 343 shoots for the stars of a universe, it has to reckon with several factors that threaten to keep it grounded, including those aforementioned fans. Even after a rousing reception for Halo Infinite when it released in November, players have voiced frustrations at a lack of updates and promised new content. Meanwhile, reviewers on Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic have found that the Halo TV series lacked luster in its early episodes, with scores around 60 the day of its public release. Metacritic isn't everything to go off of, folks. Or Rotten Tomatoes, for that matter. These new opportunities for the franchise have brought with them new challenges. And as the Halo brand seeks to grow, 343 and Microsoft must grapple, wow, that was an unintended pun, is what I imagine, with how to get and keep its fans on board. Halo's history. Ever since Microsoft acquired series creator Bungie in 2000, Halo has broken ground for the video game industry, with Master Chief quickly ascending to become the mascot for for Microsoft's gaming ambitions. This stream is fucking crazy right now. We'll keep yeah. dropping. Yep. Um, regardless, then a Mac-based game under development, Halo Combat Evolved was repurposed to serve as the launch title for Microsoft's new console. Its success helped shift the first-person shooter genre onto consoles and contributed to the Xbox selling a then record-breaking 1.5 million consoles before the end of 2001. Quote, when the Xbox launched, it wasn't a guarantee if it was going to be successful, said Ross. I would argue that Halo and Xbox together created that success, end quote. The animation and flexibility of the first game's multiplayer characters popularized a new genre of storytelling called machinima, using in-game engines and animations to tell new stories. South Park would use tactic with the game World of Warcraft to win an Emmy Award. Halo 2 revolutionized network console play, allowing friends to play the game together without sharing a sofa. Halo 3 brought player-created arenas and spaces with its Forge mode. This proceeded by years the player-led creative revolution that was Minecraft, now also owned by Microsoft. When Halo 3 released in 2007, it became the most profitable entertainment launch in history, outgrossing Spider-Man 3's box office receipts that year. That's a, wow, fucking Spider-Man reference. Crazy. But for all those industry advancements, it was the game's details and stories that won over fans by the Legion. The use of real-time graphics resonated with fans, but also with the game's makers, particularly Joseph Staten, the longtime writer of Halo Storyline who got his foot in the door ahead of the first game's release. Both in-game and beyond, such as with the live-action web series Ford Unto Dawn used to promote the release of Halo 4, Halo's world began to grow to galactic proportions. 
But after the 2015 release of Halo 5 came, a lull for the mainline games. It would be three years before 343 announced Halo Infinite at the 2018 Electric Entertainment Electronic Entertainment Expo, better known as E3. And two years later, at a similar event, 343 knew it had a big problem with Infinite. Halo's ambitions. The nearly nine-minute video hadn't even ended when the criticism began. Those watching the gameplay reveal for Halo Infinite's campaign were already filling the live chat with lament. They poked fun at the graphics. They questioned why this new game set to launch side-by-side with Microsoft's next-generation consoles looks so last-gen. The days that followed brought more outcry, with YouTubers commenting on the game's look and videos bearing all-caps titles like, Why does Halo Infinite look so bad? And the new Halo Infinite gameplay is getting tons of hate. Quote, we obviously fell down with our sort of virtual E3 at the time, Ross said at the reveal during a July 2020 online showcase. The fiery reception from fans reignited old narratives about 343's handling of the series. When Bungie was spun off in 2007, Microsoft retained the Halo IP. Ross, then running production for all of Xbox's games, urged company leadership to keep Halo as an internal property. Quote, I put a pitch together that kind of laid out the universe, the timeline, stories I thought we could tell, as well as noting that I really wanted to have all parts of Halo in one studio, because that's not how we did it before, Ross said. Quote, I wanted it to be more like George Lucas in Star Wars, where we basically owned everything, whether it be TV or movies or games, and for whatever reason, back then they gave me the keys, end quote. It was a new opportunity, but a stressful one. Xbox gave the Halo franchise to 343, which had co-developed downloadable content for Halo Reach, Bungie's last Halo game. Though 343 also retained a handful of Bungie employees who had worked on Halo, fans voiced concerns that the franchise would suffer. The infinite reveal reaction provided another such challenge. Internally, the critical reception of the gameplay footage confirmed what some 343 developers and executives believed as early as January of 2020. They were behind schedule. Delays, caused in part by the pandemic's work-from-home conditions, had set them back, and they would need time to catch up. Quote, they, 343's developers, were just basically saying, this isn't a game that we're going to be proud of, Ross said. Following the reveal, Staten, who left Bungie in 2013, actually reached out to Bonnie and asked how he could help. He was readily welcomed him back, he was readily welcomed back into the fold. Working with Sean Barron, 343's Director of Franchise Strategy and Insights, Staten poured over audience research. Quote, What are those things that players really want to see in the game? Staten said of the kinds of questions he wanted the research to answer. Quote, What do they want to see us double down on? The things that are already good. What are the gaps that you see that we're missing that we really need to fill? And we use that user research effort combined with our own design and artistic expertise to formulate a plan for what we're going to invest in and importantly, how much time it was going to take to make good on those investments, end quote. Using the findings, Staten presented a plan for what they needed to properly deliver on the game's promise. And it called for delaying the game's release by a year. Ross relayed the plan to Phil Spencer, then head of Xbox, and asked for additional funding. In August, 343 announced the 12-month delay. Quote, it was important for us as a team to actually bring Halo back to launch with the console, to kind of bring that whole moment back together, Ross said. Quote, and it was an incredibly painful decision to delay because it would have been great for the business to be there. It would have been great for Halo to be there. But it wasn't the right thing for Infinite, and it wasn't the right thing for the team. End quote. Sidebar, Will, what did we say? They want to sell their box. They want to sell the box! With the game. With the game. And that would have sold more boxes. I mean, granted, they can't keep boxes on the shelf, so it is what it is. And meanwhile, Staten, Baron, and the rest of the 343 team got to work, making the most of their newfound time. Utilizing user feedback and other metrics, they revisited the aspects of the game that testers identified as the most important to them. They made the campaign's world livelier, allowing for more interaction between the player's Master Chief character and Marines he encounter around the map. They introduced the new grappling hook device, the grapple shot, earlier in the game, allowing players to feel more powerful. And they put ample polish on the game's graphics. Quote, It was really refreshing to have a partner that was so passionate about the customer. Baron said about working with Staten. Quote, 
and getting that information from them and then using it to take those ingredients and say, these are the five things that are most valuable to that customer. Let's take the next year to polish the heck out of those things, end quote. Now, if you are looking at the show notes and you notice that those words are bolded, the reason why I bolded them is because, and again, I'm not trying to shit on anything. I'm just reading this, but it, it like struck a chord with me when that first statement is, it was really refreshing. It was really refreshing to have a partner that was so passionate about the customer. I don't want to dig too deep into it, Will, because I don't want to assume anything. But like, I can't help but feel in the back of my mind, did they not have other people that did? You know what I mean? Yeah. It was so refreshing. I'm not trying to put words into Baron's mouth. It's just when I read that, that's what I feel. In mid-November last year, 343 made another surprise announcement. The multiplayer mode for Infinite would release ahead of the scheduled December 6th release for the full game. And it'd be free to play, although we didn't know about that sooner. A year's worth of work later, the criticism gave way to applause. The game's average user score topped 8.1 on Metacritic's 10-point scale, the highest mark for any of the 343's Halo games to date. Ugly crying, Baron said. When asked about his reaction to the game's release, he was not alone. I cried. It was a very emotional. Multiplayer lead Tom French said, quote, I was just overly swept up with pride in my team and the game that we built, end quote. At a time when Halo's competition in the first-person shooter world was taking a step back, sales of Activision's Call of Duty Vanguard were lower than expected in 2020, and fans assailed EA's Battlefield 2042 for releasing in a buggy, unfinished state. 343 and Microsoft were starting to reclaim the genre's throne. But now, as 343 seeks to build on that success, its earlier gains may be receding. Halo's pivot to a live service model has come with some hiccups. The gripes from players began over a progression system that seemed overly long and laborious, or laborious. More recently, players have groused about a lack of new content coming into the game and the delayed reintroduction of co-op modes in the game's Forge feature. A March update announced neither would be ready for the beginning of May as initially planned. Now, French is very, very aware of the complaints. As someone who plays the game every night, he said he shares them. However, at the moment, his team is prioritizing lingering issues from a launch that required completely rebuilding the engine used in Halo 5 and expanding onto PCs. Quote, we always talk about it as like putting it on the Hudson, right? French said, referring to the 2009 emergency landing of U.S. Airways Flight 1549 in New York's Hudson River. Quote, we landed safely. That's good. Now we kind of got to get the momentum going again. End quote. In a fucking river. French said he and his team spent the year following the 2020 delay announcement strengthening the game's foundation and work that continues today. Quote, it's improving our platform, building, strengthening the foundation, and that includes things like ranked mode, French said. Quote, we know we can make it better. We wanted to make it better. We dreamed of it being better. Let's push it in that direction. And, you know, with PC being a new thing for us, there's issues we need to address there. Quote, there will be new maps, there will be new modes, there will be new experiences, and there will be new features. He added, quote, I'm very excited to actually see what the players think when we actually get to unleash it on them. End quote. Again, there's a lot more to the article that you can read if you'd like to. It's included in the Google Doc of the show. It's the show, exclamation point, show in chat if you're watching live. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to include that in here. Um, kind of going back on what we talked about before. They, they hear the feedback, right? They know. They understand. Now, for us as consumers, it's just waiting and seeing if they deliver on their promises, right? And providing constructive criticism where necessary and obviously holding people accountable if, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean like, hey, if let's try to keep this train rolling, keep the content train going. And that's that. We'll have to wait and see. Anything you want to add, Will? Nah, I'm just 
hoping better things come in the future and things keep moving uh, moving forward. And also, please find some better analogies for your future articles, guys, and statements. Please, no more. Yeah, Frank, we don't need to learn about your porn. Yeah. Although, and then the land- that was fucking funny. The landing it on the Hudson thing. Yeah, was that-, that was totally like... You're equating what you what your botch launch was to that? <laughs> Come on, guys. Good lord. Yeah. Oh my anyway. god. All right. So that's it for the regular news. Oh buttons. It's time for Con of the Games Watch! The CDL Major 2 presented by the Minnesota Locker. The bracket is out now. It's my Call of Duty League. Will we start in losers? Because we're fucking losers. We are fucking losers, but the, it gets worse. Oh, um, yeah. So we play against the loser of Optic Dallas against Seattle Surge. So obviously I would imagine Optic win that matchup. I would think so, but so you never know. You never know. You never know. But, but let's, I'll say this. If we play against Optic, we lose. If we play against Seattle, I think we lose, but we have a chance. That's what I'll say. I think Seattle has not been performing very well. I think we take the surge. Yeah. We could take them. Uh, <laughs> just sitting here yawning. Sorry. Okay. I just don't think the surge have been performing incredibly well. I mean, clearly they perform better than us because we didn't make it into the fucking winner's bracket, but still. I'd say we'd have a shot against them. I say we have literally no shot against Optic. Yeah. It's just, it is weird to me how the different games and maps like that come in make such a change in where people, how people play. Oh yeah. Like it's kind of, kind of crazy that it is, you know, the Ravens, man, they're in the winner's bracket. They're that's, in the fucking winner's the bracket. Breach, the gorillas. Yeah. Breach have made a name for themselves. London shocked basically fucking everybody. Subliners after their team change. Mm-hmm. Wowzers. They're actually winning. Who knew? I mean, the fact that the fact that we're seeing surge in a winner's bracket. Just last year, they were just hot garbage. Yeah, bottom. Yeah. All year. So, new game, new teams, new stories. Mm-hmm. Good shit. Who do you think wins? <laughs> I yeah. feel like it's going to come down to optic phase, right? Sure. That's been the, the the two big ones all year. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say it'd probably be those two. I'd love to see if, if London made a run. Yeah, that'd be cool. It'd be really fucking cool. I think Boston has, like, some beef. They just, I mean, they have a, they have a fire in them. Like especially when they went up against Ultra, um, in their in their weekly matches or whatever the hell it was, yeah, it's because just, they they dropped uh Toronto dropped methods, and methods is on breach. Honestly, though, it's it's kind of mind blowing to me that it's literally only if if you win out right, yeah, if you make it to winners finals, it's literally You're three matches, three matches, three matches over four days. Or I guess four with the grand finals, right? But and I don't think they start. Oh no, you have to start with winners because you need to figure out who's playing in losers. Yeah. So you do like what round one winners on Thursday, Friday, yeah, whenever Thursday. I think it's Thursday, right? Yeah. Dragonite anyway. was already on his way. Yeah. Today. To here, in Minnesota. Yep. So I imagine what take a day or two to prep. That's has to start on March 31st. It's literally in the fucking thing. Thursday. It starts Thursday. Yep. Jesus Christ. All right. Yeah, a lot of matches to be played. Not a lot in winners though, but you know, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. I, I agree with you though. The optic phase thing that probably makes the most sense. I'd love to see London in there. I think Boston have a real shot if they can bring it on land. I don't really see anybody in losers going anywhere unless ultra somehow, you know, do better, but who the fuck knows? I'd love to see. I would love to see, uh, 
Oh, man. What an incredible matchup it would be right off the bat. If Boston somehow lost, I'm not saying it's impossible, but if, if Boston lost to LAG, Boston would play ultra first round in, in losers. I think that'd be a crazy matchup because loser goes home. Yeah. Tournament lives literally on the line right away. I Oh, I'd be, oh man. Who knows? We'll have, to, we'll have to wait and see. All right. Will, it's time for Will's Adventures and Mailovers. And other games, too. Maybe an oldie and a goodie. <laughs> Will, what'd you play last week? Um, I did play some Halo Infinite. I feel like I just played ranked. You know, I, I, I brought the... To watch the Halo TV show, I brought the Xbox upstairs to the TV mm. versus my gaming setup. And I decided to try Halo. Uh-oh. My sensitivity was so far off. Oh, yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to suffer through this game because I'm not changing it, and I'll just be done. And I just played one quick play match, and I was like, all right, see ya. I don't blame you at all. Um, and then uh, I also played Elden Ring. My boy. I got, I got it. My I told boy. Justin that, you know, I went from playing Halo to Elden Ring, so I must just like pain. Um, <laughs> just... It's difficult. Yeah, Elden Ring is, uh, it's it's a tough one. Um, what have you done so far? I've explored s- kind of southeast of where you start. Okay. I've gone to the first big boss and got my butt kicked heavily and was like, I need to do more and find out more stuff. Margit? Yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. Margit's a piece of shit. Margaret is not like Margaret is a really shitty. It's the beauty of the game though, right? You don't have to fucking actually. I mean, I, I, I mean, you already know it. Yeah. You, you don't have to fight Margaret. You can just skip. Like you can literally run around the castle. Yeah. I feel like I got to fight him. To, oh no. To beat him. Yo. Yeah. Like to progress, obviously it's just like, you don't, I mean, but you could just like, I don't like you. Skirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, but yeah. Okay, so you fought Margaret a couple times. Yeah, decided to like, wait a second. Because like, I got him down to like maybe 20% health. Wow. A couple times, and I'm like, I- I'm not powerful enough just because like I was running out of all resources. Sure. And What build are you going with to start? Uh, Dex. I don't know. Just, just playing. What weapon are you using? A katana. Oh, okay. So de- it's a dex weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Samurai boy. Samurai boy. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You know, I've been watching anime. I had to go in with the samurai. There you go. Katana, like feel like I wanted that feel. You're gonna go with the bleed build. Yeah. That everyone's talking about yep, the bleed build. Yeah. Before that shit gets nerfed. <laughs> so I'm just. Wa- I I honestly don't know builds. I haven't watched videos. I'm literally just playing in the dark. I have Good. a couple friends at work that play, and they're giving me little tips and whatnot, but not sure. giving too much away. Yep. So that's been fun to like actually like have people that are teaching me a game versus just learning from videos. No, I hear you. I it's in Elden Ring is such a Elden Ring is an incredible video game. And this is coming from somebody who doesn't typically play the Soulsborne titles. Bloodborne was the one I spent the most time with. But this game surprises you at every single turn. And I mean that. Like it'll literally surprise you at every single turn. I was talking to a coworker as well about it. He beat it. Yeah. And I watch a lot of streams about it. So a lot of things have been like I've purposely spoiled myself on things. Oh, yeah. I've seen the whole final boss fight. Right. But at the same time, this is how crazy this is. Even though I've watched people stream it, I've seen areas, whatever it may be, that's not even, like, it It seriously feels like crumbs yeah. compared to what is in the game. I'm not kidding. You You think when you start the game, you're like, this map's fucking, this map's pretty big. Then you go to another area and you're like, oh, oh, this game's way bigger than that. And then, no, it's 
way bigger than that. Yeah. It, it's remarkable. It's honestly remarkable. It's it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It is also a very beautiful game. Yes. Um, I took a couple, if you, I took a couple screenshots. So I, I like walked up and there's like a, there's a, a big thing. I'll just say, I'm not going to describe what it is. So sure. I don't want to ruin it, but there's a thing just walking across the field in, in the, in the distance. And I just stop a like, mausoleum. What the I fuck is that? I took about. a screenshot kind of like it started inching towards it. Cause I didn't know what it was. I didn't know if it was friend or foe walking towards it. And I get attacked by a few things, kill those. I creep up to it and I slash at its leg a couple times. And I'm like, oh, I'm not doing damage. I'm out of here. <laughs> like, like this. Elden Ring does so much with its environmental storytelling as well and teaching you without telling you, right? It does a really, really good job of there. There is a very basic tutorial at the very beginning of the game. Um, you can miss oh, it. Yeah. You can skip it yep. if you want to. But if you don't, it's a very basic, like, this is how these games work. Cave of knowledge. Yep, the cave of knowledge. It's, and this, it's literally, this is how this game works, right? Very basic. Um, but it gets so much deeper from that point forward. Every little thing. It's seriously, I've, I've poured over like videos, streams, whatever it may be, just because I'm so interested in how people are playing this game, the builds that they're using, what they're experiencing when they see a specific thing for the first time. It's, it's an experience. It's an experience unlike any other right now in games. So I'll just say this. If you, as a game player, have never played a Souls title before or don't think you would enjoy a Souls title, give it a shot. Yes, the barrier to entry is 60 bucks, depending upon the platform that you're on. That's shitty. But... Platforms typically have a refund policy if you only play for a certain amount of time. I know Steam does. I think it's like two hours and you can refund it for full. Yep. Um, and the PC port is performance-wise hit or miss. But uh, it's, as weird as it is to say, it is the most welcoming uh, Soulsborne title because you're not forced down a specific path. In all the other games... Um, Sekiro was starting to get away from it, even though it had a linear path that you would go through overall. Um, Soulsborne titles typically have a linear path that you go through and you bash your head against a wall against a boss multiple times in a row or a room or whatever it is until you can progress further, right? Or just stay in one area, farm up, and then continue on. In Elden Ring, you don't have to do that at all. And the game encourages you not to. The game encourages you to move, to explore, to find things on your own, to be curious. And what? Oh, sometimes being curious can get you up royally fucked. But. Right. But that's the thing too, is that you're, you're the intention of the game and, and uh, the creator of these titles has said so. The intention is for it to be difficult, is for you to die. Because the point is you learn. Every yeah. single time you learn, every single time you die, you learn a little bit more. Whether you made a mistake, whether you're learning an enemy's pattern, whether you jumped off a ledge, whatever it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, did you fight the crabs in the, like, starting area? I fought crabs. Because, like, only one is there, right? So it's kind of sp kind of spoilerish, I guess. Go ahead. Cause like there's a pond, right? Yeah. And one big crab's chilling there. Yeah. I went and fought it. Okay. And then I was like, there's little baby crabs here. I need runes. I slash the baby crabs. Uh oh, two more big crabs come out of the pond. If you do that. Oh shit. So like, I'm just sitting there fucking running for my life. If I'm getting chased by giant crabs. Oh my God. No, I, uh, I just fought uh, a group of one big and a few small, like uh, over on a beachfront. So not in okay. a pond. I think I know what you're talking about, though, because I've just ran past it every time. Yeah, because you don't need to go down there. There's nothing there. Is that the same? Oh, okay, so that's not the same, like, lake area that has the dragon in it? Have you no, come nope. across that yet? Nope, not there yet. Okay. Eh. There's a lot of shit in that video game. Um, 
Yeah. It's fucking rad. Elden Ring. I'm not kidding, guys. Ser- if Seriously. Even if you were think you were not a fan of these titles and you never played one before. I think you owe it to yourself to give this one a try. You, hell, wait and, for it to go on sale. I don't fucking care. Just just give it a try if you can. And I'll, I'll, I'll say, like, when I play open world games, I do do very linear things. Like, I want to progress the story. Like, that's what I'm really there for. Yeah. You can't really do that in Elden Ring. Because, like, no. I fought Margit way too early. Mm-hmm. But that's the beauty. Like, once you get to that point and you're just bashing your head against the wall, I was like, okay, time to turn around and go find some other things to level up and then come back to this. Right, and even even in Limgrave, which is the starting area that you're in, there's so, so many hidden things. Mm-hmm. I haven't found them all. I know that. They're in every single, like I said, this game amazes you at every single turn because there's something, like if you spot something in the distance, right? You know that whole the whole meme about Breath of the Wild, like where... The, the creators were talking about, you see that off in the distance, you can go there. Like, you see that mountaintop, you can go there. In Elden Ring, that's literally it. You can go basically anywhere you want. You may get fucked, like you said, along the way, but you can go anywhere you want. And then there's hidden things. That it's, dude. It's fucking insane how big that game is. And we're all maidenless. We're all maidenless. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What else did you play, Will? Uh, I played UFC 3. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, I created a character. I'm in the career mode because I was waiting for Elden Ring to install. <laughs> it needed something to do that wasn't online so it could install faster. Um so I'm like eight and oh, maybe. Wow. Nine and oh. Wow. Uh, all wins by knockout. Holy which, shit. Yeah. You just roundhouse kicking everybody. Is I it actually, in the octagon? My, my, my signature move is a, is a, is a kick. That's so awesome. That, so like most of my knockouts happen from kicks to the face. <laughs> just fucking, they just walk into the octagon. You're like, you're not ready for this. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Woof, woof. I, I made a I made a striker, so I'm not good like grappling on the ground submissions. That's not my thing. I'm no, there you're to punch. Fucking... I'm gonna punch you the fuck out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just covered the dude's body in tattoos. Oh like, my god. Uh, yeah, it's it's. Uh, you're just literally playing fight night. Yep. And uh, <laughs> you get to create. Um, you get like you get to like choose the nickname and then like you get to create their Twitter tag because there's like a whole like interaction thing. Like, of course, you can, there is. You can promote your fights and stuff on Twitter. Yeah. So my my uh, my nickname is like Big Daddy or something, and then my my guy's name is Darren. So it's, his my Twitter uh, tag is Darren Daddy. <laughs> Big Daddy Darren. <laughs> yep. Dude. <laughs> oh so, my god. Yep. So I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> Big Daddy Darren. Yep. That's amazing. I love you for that. That's remarkable. Big Daddy Darren. Yep. <sighs> Fuck yeah, Daddy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, Hell but yeah. But those are the three games I played this week. What about yourself, man? Uh, I played some Halo Infinite. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. We did the play date. We did the play date, yeah. It was it was fun. Uh Talked about the Halo TV show during it. It was a good time. Um, yeah. Uh, I will say, had one of the most heartbreaking losses. Justin can speak to it fully because he it literally happened to him and in front of his eyes. Um, and it was, it was terrible. Uh, shout out to Oath. We, we played against her. She won. Last second, Hail Mary nade by her saved the game. But, man, I thought we had it. I really did. But we didn't. We didn't have it. It was sad. <laughs> also, fuck high power. That map sucks. Um, Justin. <laughs> wait. wait. <laughs> Who creates a character and calls him Darren? Is your Spartan name Doug? 
A Spartan doesn't have a name, I guess. Yeah, you should have called him Big Daddy Dick. Big <laughs> Daddy Richard? Richard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Big Daddy D. All I'll say is uh, one of my D&D characters, his name is like Adarin. So oh. I, just, I just adapted that to be... Big Daddy Adarin. Yeah, so I just took Darren off the end of that and made it. Big Daddy D. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, I also played some Elden Ring myself. Uh, I am playing a mage. Um, well, basically just a full on sorcerer at this point. Um, and there I've stumbled upon a lot of caves. I've, I've sought them out. Uh, like on the map, you can kind of see where one would make out to be. So mm. I like go in that direction, find some hidden stuff. It's cool. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, be wary of here's a tip. Be wary of treasure chests that send you places. Oh yeah, I heard they can get you in some sticky situations. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. How am I gonna know what one sends me which one you just part, don't know? You don't. And the worst part is that it's designed that way. Yeah. Like there literally there's one in I, there's probably more than one, but the one that I found in Limgrave transport you a place that you probably just shouldn't be in and i'm like fuck the, yeah the crystal cave crystal cave someone yeah. told me his my buddy at work did that yep. crystal cave i got the meteorite staff though which is around that area that you get transported to but fucking a <laughs> um no elden ring's awesome really 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 fucking good um so there's that but there's so many so many other games too will we're talking about Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Yeah, I got to play. Uh, I have a buddy who's getting that too who want, from D&D that wants to play because it is kind of D&D based. It is. So. Uh, and I want to play more Tunic. Maddie said he's dropping the fuck off that. Uh, understandable. Um, fucking a game that I'm genuinely super, super stoked about, which comes out next week, hmm. is... Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga. A lot of people are excited for that. Yep. Comes out next fucking week, man. Oh my God. Completely overhauls. People can shit on Halo. Ga- I have a Halo. People can shit on, uh, shit on Lego games all they want, but like the Lego Star Wars games were so good and they complete, they're completely overhauling everything. It just looks sick. So yeah, next week on the fifth, I'm so excited. I can't wait to fucking play that. Um, yeah. So many fucking games coming out. It's crazy. Yeah, oh, I just played two games, so that's that's it for me. Shall we get into some shout-outs, Will? <laughs> what the fuck was that? It, like, only played it, played a second of it, and it stopped. Boink. <laughs> Boink. Uh, shout-out to everyone who joined the community play date. I hope you guys had fun. It was a fun time for me. Um, Justin says, but they're adding microtransactions. Wait. What? Star Wars? Oh, yeah, that's right. They are. As long as the full game is there. Is it EA? What? <laughs> no, it's, uh, who is it? Um, oh my God, who makes them? Can you buy like the different freaking. I think it's character packs. Yeah, different clothes or whatever. Yeah, I think so. Um, oh my God, I'm literally blanking out on who makes it. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, yeah, sucks, but. Harmonic? No. No. Because um, <laughs> it's because they did now Lego I'm Rock just, Band. Cause now they, I'm just fucking focused on the last on Lego it. game I played. Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is made by TT Games. That's it. Titty Games. Great. So, yeah, it is great. Uh, shout out to everyone who followed and subbed during the live show. We have uh, Phases Future. Thank you for the follow. Uh, Brian and Justin with the 20 and 15 month resubs. Thank you guys very much as well. Greatly appreciated. Um, congratulations to the LVT crew on hitting their gamers outreach goal and getting the go-kart for, um, gamers outreach. That's fucking awesome. Seriously. Congratulations to you guys. Really, really cool to see the community come out in force on that. Uh, during that stream, hit the goal. Good shit. And then also speaking of gamers outreach, congratulations to gamers outreach in general for raising over $1 million. One million dollars 
That's fucking bonkers. And that's amazing. That's all I got for the shout outs. Uh, community creations. I only have a couple. Uh, Halo memes every day. Reddit.com forward slash r forward slash Halo memes. Go check it out. You know what it is. And then clips of the week number 150 by High Tech Redneck. Go check that video out as well. Well, uh, so pornography. Um, I'm just kidding. That's all I got for the show. <laughs> just, <laughs> fuck, just, get that analogy out of there. Man. Therefore, would you mind plugging the show? If you'd like to listen on podcast services, search for HGS Pro Talk. We are on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, and others as well. Pocket Cast. If you'd like to watch the live show, tune in usually at 7 p.m. Central on Mondays to our Twitch, twitch.tv slash HGS Pro Talk. If you'd like to watch VODs, we have a YouTube. Look for HGS Pro Talk on YouTube. If you would like to join our wonderful community on Discord, we have a Discord where a lot of people hang out. So go there. The link is provided in the Google Doc of the show, notes of the show or on our link tree on our Twitter. Speaking of Twitter, we have some social media accounts, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Check us out there. We also have our website, hgsprotalk.com, where you can find a link to our merch in the top right corner and all things HGS Pro Talk. And don't forget about the fine folks over at Podcast Evolved who produced that wonderful Map Legends video today. Make sure to check out EvolvedHalo.com. Your, your home, home for Halo. For Halo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, check out their shows, Podcast Evolved, Mission Debrief, the new Paramount Plus show, Halo Plus TV Plus episode uh, is out. The, the first one's out, so go check it out if you want to hear their thoughts on the Halo TV show. They also have their show, Book Club, Build with Blocks and Halo Headlines. Literally a one-stop shop for anything and everything Halo-related. Go do it. And since we're partnered with them, do it. The competitive scene is also included in there. There you go. Because it's us. Us. Bitch. <laughs> Don't be a shitter. Wonderful. It's still thundering outside. It is. I'm scared. <laughs> I blame I blame the lo- the lost frames on that. The storm? Yeah. It's possible. Because, like, we haven't had a storm unless it's been snow. We haven't had, like, a rainstorm here for months. And literally right before we started recording the show, like, it fucking shook things. Man, I haven't heard, like I told Will before we started recording, I haven't heard thunder in a long time. So, crazy. Uh, well, thank you so much for going through those. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for the pornography filled episode 228 of HCS <laughs> no, Pro Talk. No. Um, if you're watching live, thank you so much for, uh, sitting through the technical difficulties. I apologize for everything that happened there with the mic and then the drop frames, whatever it may be. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your busy evening to come spend time with us, talk with us on the show. Greatly appreciated. Um, if you're listening to the audio version of the show or checking out the VOD, uh, hopefully we'll just take out those bits that you don't have to worry about and everything is as cohesive as can be. Uh, but thank you as well for taking the time out of your busy day, night, weekend, pooping time, whatever it may be to watch or listen to the show. It's greatly appreciated. And we appreciate you. Um, like we said earlier, the uh, Money Tuesday is happening right now. So we're going to go watch that after we end our show. So you should too. And again, if you're listening to the audio or VOD version of this show, go check out their VOD as well. Watch all the content. Spread the love. Spread the porn. We'll be <laughs> back next week to talk about God knows what. Hopefully not pornography and not landing in the Hudson River. Uh, but I, on that weird ass note until next week, I guess. Bye-bye. You know it when you see it.